Hey everybody, we're down here at our off-grid cabin. We're making some cowboy coffee this afternoon and I wanted to run you through the steps. When we're out camping, we get a lot of inquiries about how we make this and also some of our friends locally want to know when the power's out, how come we always have such good coffee. So I'm going to take you through this process of our own version of cowboy coffee. Traditional cowboy coffee, you're going to bring a pot to a boil. You're going to throw the grounds in while it's boiling. Let it boil for four minutes. You take it off, hit it with a little cold water. That'll settle the grounds, and you're done. The cowboys did this in the 1800s. It's still applicable today. We're going to do things a little different, and I'm going to take you through those steps. The first thing is that's different and the most important we roast our own beans here at Bird Dog Farms. And fresh beans are going to react a lot differently in water than store-bought Folgers already ground coffee. When you're roasting from green to roasted coffee, it produces a lot of CO2 and, and quite a bit escapes, but there's still a lot that stays with that bean. And when it hits that water, it, ex it expands. It's called the bloom. So the first thing we have to do that's different from traditional coffee, cowboy coffee, is when we come to a boil, we take it off the heat. We do not want it boiling. When we put our grounds in there, it's going to form a crust. And if the water's boiling, it's going to blow up because it won't, the heat won't be able to get through. We don't want that. So we're just about ready to boil. So that's the most important step. To, to recognize that you got to take it off the boil. So I'm going to throw, throw the, the grounds in there. They're going to bloom and form this crust and we're going to let it just sit for a minute and then I'm going to break that crust gently. So it's almost to a boil. I'm going to get my beans ready. Grind them up. We have no power. We're grinding them up by hand. That's going to bring up two questions. One, what coarse grind do I use? If you're using a regular drip coffee, Mr. Coffee, you're going to be around a medium. If you're going to do cowboy coffee, if you're going to do a French press, a pour over, you want to be coarser than that. You want to be like uh, kosher salt. I'm going to go even coarser than that for this process. When you have a drip coffee, you want surface, as much surface area as possible on your coffee so because the water is just flowing through. It's just touching it and coming through. This process the coffee's going to get completely immersed and I'm going to get full extraction. So I can use a coarser grind, it's easier to work with, and then if I have to filter a little bit out at the end, I, I don't have to worry about a fine grind getting through. Second question is going to be how much coffee to use. The sweet spot ratio is 66 grams per liter, which really doesn't mean a lot to most of us. A liter is just over a quart, so I've got a, I've got a quart and a half in here, but call it a liter and a half, and I'd want about 100 grams. Um, I use a third of a cup measuring, gives me about 30 to 35 grams. I know you can't convert volume to mass, but it's close enough for our process. So I've got a quart and a half, I've used three scoops of beans, I've ground them up. The water's off the boil. Still got a little bit to boil. Here we go. And we're just going to let them sit. You see how they don't sink in there and, and mix in with the water? They just sit up top. Okay, that's all right. We just want to leave it alone. Let it steep on its own. There's a good process going on there. We don't want to touch it. So we're going to give that a minute, and then we're going to break that crust gently. We don't want to stir it, we just want to break it, just some, get it submerged. It's going to rebloom a little bit, so after a couple more minutes, we'll break that second crust. Give it one more minute, and we're ready to have some coffee. I'd say we're probably pretty close.
you can see it's it's starting to get wet all the way through but not quite but that's all right we're going to just gently break this crust okay and you can see bubbles coming out steam getting out that's a great sign we've got some good fresh coffee going Okay, so first bloom has been, the crust has been broken on first bloom. Alright, so now we've got to give it a couple more minutes. It's very important to, to recognize that fact about the fresh beans. It makes a much better cup of coffee. Terrific aroma, but you've got to be careful when you're making it. If you let that thing boil, it's, it's coming out. So again... Traditional coffee, you just let it boil, you hit it with some cold water. This, we're going to go through this process, then we'll hit it with some cold water. We'll sink some of those grounds, but not all of them. That's why we're going to use the sieve for the first cup. By the time we get back for a second cup, they will all have sunk to the bottom. Just about ready to take another look at it. That's looking beautiful. Can you see all those little bubbles? Yes. That is some good looking coffee. Right. We're gonna just give that one more minute and we're gonna have ourselves a fresh pot of coffee. I don't know, I think I've touched on everything. We need to go over. In terms of temperature, now that question comes up too. The ideal temperature for brewing coffee is 205. At our elevation, water boils at 207. Once we throw those grounds in, it kind of seals, seals the top of that water, so it doesn't cool down very much at all. Even by the end of this process, that water is maybe 200 degrees. If you've got a Mr. Coffee... You'll be lucky if that thing's brewing coffee at 170, 175 degrees. And that's why your coffee is so flat and tastes so stale. Not only because you're using store-bought coffee, but because it's not hot enough to get full extraction. Very important if you want a good cup of coffee, get your water just off the boil. If you're doing a pour-over or a French press, you want to be at 205 to 207. It's ideal. All right. So there it is. I'm going to just put a little cold water on it. Not much. Believe me, that water will sink to the bottom. It'll pull some grounds with it. It will not cool off that pot of coffee. If you're outside and it's cold and you come back for your second cup and it's not hot, you can turn the heat on again just for a minute. Just don't bring it to a boil, but just you can reheat it. It's okay. All right, let me pour this. Show you what we got. I just use this sieve, catch some grinds. Like I say, by the time I come back for a second cup, those will all be gone. Be sunk down to the bottom. Right there. Cowboy coffee, bird dog farm style. It's hot. No doubt about it. Very hot. It's delicious. Smells great. That's it. That's how we make it here. We'll see you in the next video. Go get yourself a cup of coffee.